Hello and welcome back to the Locked on Oilers podcast. I'm your host, Brad Holden. And on today's episode, we've got some unfortunate news around Darnell Nurse. We will talk about that. Plus, we're going to be heading down to Bakersfield with some Bakersfield Beat Report. Our first edition of the Bakersfield Beat Report. All that and more on today's episode of Locked on Oilers. Your Locked On Oilers, your daily podcast on the Edmonton Oilers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to Locked On Oilers. I'm your host, Brett Holden. And yes, as I mentioned, Darnell Nurse did receive some unfortunate news uh, heading into playoffs. Plus, yes, we are heading down to Bakersfield for our first ever Bakersfield beat report. And Bakersfield been hot. It's been hot. We'll go down there and talk about how the Condors have been doing in their playoff race. Plus, four Condors who you may see in an Oilers uniform in the upcoming seasons. Maybe even next season. Three of them are pretty predictable, but one of them you may never heard of. Let's get into first, however, the news of Darnell Nurse. As yesterday, it came out that Darnell Nurse will most likely miss the rest of the regular season. They will reevaluate him when they go into the first round and see if he can play in the first game, but it is not promised right now. With the rest of the regular season, the Oilers just need one more win to clinch home uh, highest advantage in the playoffs. They are most likely to get it, but it would be nice to certainly hammer that down now, especially with uh, the LA Kings getting a new breath of life almost after that Vegas Golden Knights uh, collapse, let's just say. Once again, thank you so much for making Locked On Oilers your first listen every day. We are available wherever you get your podcast. Darnell Nurse out once again. Uh... Let's take a look at what the Oilers' defense will probably look like without him. Uh, right now, they currently have Chris Russell and Cody Cece as the top pairing. Not exactly sure how I feel about that one. Chris Russell, as Jay Woodcroft has said, you know exactly what you're going to get out of Chris Russell. The guy's a grizzled veteran. He's the league leader, the all-time league leader in block shots in the NHL. And realistically, he did come into the league as an offensive defenseman, so he does kind of have that offensive upside potentially to him. He has four points in four games after the Columbus game. Unfortunately, he couldn't get a point. But uh, he has been looking good. You know what you're going to get out of him. And he's a veteran. He's been there before. Cody Cece, on the other hand, we have, as soon as I got on this podcast, I've been giving all the love to Cody Cece. And he's deserved it under Jay Woodcroft. He has improved and become, honestly, the Oilers' number one potentially shut down defenseman next to Darnell Nurse. Certainly the number one shut down pairing next to Darnell Nurse. And he's really taken a step not only defensively, but offensively as well. Whether or not that'll continue without Darnell Nurse, will remain. we will remain to see that. The second uh, pairing that they have right now is one that we've seen a bunch of already this season. It is Duncan Keith and Evan Bouchard. It is nice to see the experience of uh, Duncan Keith kind of be passed down to Evan Bouchard. We saw Evan Bouchard starting to get a little uh, feisty, physical uh, against uh, Colorado. He didn't like what he saw uh, against uh, uh, Colorado, and it's nice to see that. Uh, Yesterday in practice, Evander Kane and Evan Bouchard I put in air quotes, uh, fought in practice. They dropped the gloves, had a little playful go. So it's nice to see that he, he, even though it is in practice, he is willing to jokingly drop the gloves and protect his teammates. But uh, Evan Bouchard has really taken a step this season. It probably, though, that pairing might see the most amount of minutes depending on the situations in the game. I'm comfortable with that uh, pairing. It's exactly what you wanted when you brought in Duncan Keith. You wanted that experience to be passed down to the younger guys. And uh, that's been happening. um, I almost said Tyson Berry. Evan Bouchard, excuse me. Evan Bouchard has had a massive jump this season and has become exactly the type of defenseman we thought he would. The third pairing is I'm, I'm kind of excited about this pairing. It is Brett Kulak and Tyson Berry. 
I've liked basically everything Brett Kulak has done so far. He is a quiet defenseman. You don't really need to hear from him a lot or need to see a lot from him all the time. That's the type of defenseman he is, just suppressing the the, uh, opposition's attack and just making sure that they're not getting to the goalie. <laughs> He's a big guy, and they haven't gotten to the goalie. As you've seen with Mike Smith and Miko Koskinen's uh, improved save percentage and goals against, the Oilers have been looking better ever since that Brett Kulak acquisition. And a lot of people have had Brett Kulak be Kenny Holland's best acquisition as the Oilers GM. Personally, for me, it'd be Evander Kane, but that's not for me. We're talking about the defense today. So... With those three uh, pairings, what could happen? Are they going to keep the 11-7 lineup as they normally have, or will they go back to the conventional 12-6, 12 forward, 6 defenseman? I think that when they are on this trip, they are playing in Pittsburgh tonight. I think that they are going to keep the conventional 12-6, have those six defensemen that we just mentioned there play the game in Pittsburgh. And once they travel back to Edmonton, that's when I think we will see a call-up of a defenseman. I have a couple names that we will get to on uh, who may be joining up. But first, I just want to quickly talk about why the 11-7 may be, uh, or the 12-6 rather, in Pittsburgh tonight may be a little preferred. We talked about why the or why the Oilers are having these too many men penalties. And I put it in air quotes because it, it it's just getting almost outrageous. Three straight games with a too many men penalty on Sunday against the Columbus Blue Jackets. They almost had two in one game. Two in one game. The announcers were going, wow, the Oilers got away with another one. A lot of that has been under the uh, 11-7 uh, protocol or lineup that Jay Woodcroft has deployed for the Oilers. Six too many men penalties since uh, Woodcroft has joined the Oilers. Only two under Dave Tippett this season for a grand total of eight. So I'm not the best at math, but that is certainly, I think, three times more than what the Oilers had underneath Dave Tippett. So we'll see if the Oilers continue their little trek in the too many men uh uh, story, I guess, as uh, we will see if the 12 6 in Pittsburgh tonight, as uh, we will see if that is what they do deploy, but they don't really have any extra defensemen up with the club. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see. But once again, when they get back to Edmonton, I expect, and a lot of people expect, the Oilers to call up a defenseman. A favorite name that has been coming up recently is a guy who just came off an ankle injury and has had time up with the Oilers and had some time under Jay Woodcroft earlier in the season as well in Bakersfield. And this one's obvious. This one, Philip Broberg will probably be the guy who the Oilers call up, which would be great. He has familiarity with the Oilers. He has familiarity under Woodcroft. He is coming off of an injury, but he has, he scored, uh, on what was it on Saturday for the Bakersfield Condors? We will get to that in a little bit. He did score over the weekend for the Condors this weekend, so he is kind of feeling that leg. He's feeling better on that leg, feeling better on that ankle. So we'll see how if he is the one that the Oilers do call up. Another name potentially that the Oilers may call up. We'll see. Uh, this is not a name that has been out in the media at all, but I wouldn't be surprised if a name like Slater Cuckoo might be call, uh, making his way up to Edmonton. The only reason why I see Slater Cuckoo potentially being the one to come up would be just because of his familiarity with the NHL game. Depending on how the Oilers fare tonight in Pittsburgh, if they can clinch that home playoff spot, the final two games in Edmonton aren't necessarily the most important. So maybe getting some minutes for a guy who might see some playoff time potentially uh, other than Philip Broberg, you can keep Broberg down in the minors just to make sure that ankle is okay. And uh, once the playoffs start, you can eventually bring him up. And maybe Slater Cuckoo is the guy that they would prefer because he is kind of one of the mo those more stable guys in the defensive end. Very strong in the neutral zone as well and very can really get the puck up to the wingers very well. So we'll see if that name is uh, the one that the Oilers call up from Bakersfield. Another name I wish, I wish... I wish, I wish, I wish would come up would be Marcus Niemelainen. However, Niemelainen is currently injured. It is not too, it hasn't been exactly reported how long Niemelainen will be out. So will he be available for the playoffs? Maybe. We'll see. Uh, again, that 
Nima Linen still today is the Oilers' seventh. He's is seventh on the Oilers team in hits. Still, he's only played a handful of games and he has 82 hits this season. 82, and he's only played a handful of games. He's one hit above uh Yesapoli RV for uh seventh on the team. I love Nima Linen. If uh, we do end up playing a big banger of a team like LA. Uh, they could be a team, or uh, Nima Linen rather, could be a guy that you could really want on your team, especially for playoffs. Uh, but he is down in Bakersfield, and uh, he is one of those rookies that not a lot of people exactly had penned in on the Oilers lineup, basically really ever in his career, especially after he went back to Europe, didn't really stick around in the organization, finally came back to Bakersfield and played a couple of years and eventually made it onto the team. The organization has really helped that guy. And win a little in a second, rather, I will talk to you about some other Oilers, other Bakersfield Condors that could be making their way up to the big squad. But first, I want to tell you about HelloFresh. What is HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Get farm fresh seasonal produce and easy to make recipes delivered right to your door every week. Ingredients travel from the farm to your doorstep in under a week. So you're always getting fresh ingredients. They always arrive or always arrive fresh. There we go. All the ingredients travel or all the ingredients without the trip to the supermarket or to the store. Pick your favorites from 50 different weekly options and skip weeks when you need to. Change your delivery date or update your preferences in the HelloFresh app. You can also customize your favorite dishes with their brand new Hello Custom offerings by swapping out maybe a protein for another side, or maybe a side for another protein. You can also upgrade for a more luxe experience, and you can even add protein to a veggie meal. That means more choices, more variety, and more meals that are truly tailored to you. Go to HelloFresh.com slash locked on 16 one six sixteen to you and use code locked on sixteen to get up to sixteen free meals and three free gifts. Yes, that is go to hellofresh.com slash locked on sixteen one six and use the code locked on sixteen for up to sixteen free meals and three free gifts. Mm. Honestly, I've been starting to cook a little bit more. And uh, I, that'll certainly help me. It'll certainly cut down. I don't have a lot of time on my hands. I'm doing this. I'm doing a bunch of other things. So being able to use HelloFresh has really helped me in making my, uh, making my meals more easy to use, easy to eat, easy to cook, just getting me good food to eat. All right, let's move on to these four prospects that I think the Edmonton Oilers, you could probably see in an Edmonton Oilers uniform Sooner than you think, really sooner than you think, much sooner than you think. The first three that I'm going to name are pretty obvious. These are all names that you've heard before and that you've probably seen in an Oilers uniform at one point. Actually, one of them hasn't suited up yet for the Oilers. But uh, the first name that I'm going to mention, it's the obvious one. It's one that basically all Oilers fans want on the team right now. And no, it's not the forward. It is the goaltender, Stuart Skinner. Yes, Stuart Skinner has... Well, let's be real. Mike Smith is not going to be back next year. I highly doubt. I highly doubt. I think this will be his last year in the NHL. And Miko Koskinen, as he has been rather strong for the Oilers this season, depending on where you're looking and when you're talking about, he has been quite strong for the Oilers uh, in the grand total of the season. So he does have some value around the league. We could see maybe a draft trade. We could end up seeing him sign elsewhere in free agency. So I really don't think that that crease will stay intact at all, not even in one bit. So Stuart Skinner will certainly be in the crease for the Edmonton Oilers next year. It'll just depend on who is also in it with him. It's just a matter of time. We're just waiting for the season to end for the Condors and the Oilers to eventually just pencil in Stuart Skinner as the Oilers' 
number one goaltender for Stuart Skinner. Let's take a look at the last few uh, games for Stuart Skinner. Obviously, as I said, the Oilers, a lot of fans want Stuart Skinner up with the team, but he's down in Bakersfield right now, and he has had just an amazing week, an amazing stretch. In his last five games, he's had 116 saves, 116, and a 943 save percentage. He is saving 94% of the shots that he's faced in the last uh, five games. He has looked unreal, unreal. On top of that, in the last three games, he has one shutout and there's a 97 save percentage. We'll get more into how the uh, Bakersfield Condors have done this week. So I don't want to tease. I want to tease. I don't want to spoil uh, what uh, Stuart Skinner's numbers look like recently. But in the AHL overall this season, he is 21-6-7 and seven with a 2.19 goals against average and a 0. .920 save percentage when you look at what he's doing in the nhl or what he has done in the nhl he has a six and six record this season with a 2.62 say uh goals against average that would be best on the team if you were to put him on the oilers right now yeah above miko koskinen above mike smith better goals against average than two nhl goaltenders in the nhl yeah uh what excuse me and this kid's down in the minors and we're willing to have this kid um, i'm sorry i'm sorry i shouldn't i shouldn't get too far into it but it's kind of ridiculous isn't it uh on top of that he has a 0.913 save percentage would would be tied for uh the number one spot along with miko koskinen for the edmonton oilers now number two is a name that we all kind of expected that would be up with the team already but injuries has kind of sidelined him. He's kind of just becoming his own now in the AHL. Spent some time in college and now really pushing for that spot on the roster for next year. And that is Dylan Holloway, who spent a couple seasons at Wisconsin in the NCAA. Also spent some time in the AJHL, the Alberta Junior Hockey League. Uh, also uh, spent time with the Bakersfield Condors since he signed his professional contract. Once again, we all thought that he was going to be on the team by now. We have had some acquisitions for the Oilers and some guys that have kind of stepped up since that chatter has started. I'm looking at you, Warren Fogle. Um, and plus, we picked up Derek Broussard, Vander Kane, a couple very solid players, and uh, haven't really needed his services too much, so we can keep him down in the minors, let him marinate a little bit, and uh, make sure that he's the best possible player we can, or he can be when he's coming up. In the AHL so far this season, 32 games played, he has 8 goals, 13 assists for 21 points, which isn't too bad considering he stepped in halfway through the season, considering he stepped in after a pretty tough injury, a pretty tough surgery. He has stepped in and really played well for the uh, Bakersfield Condors so far. However, before that, in the NCAA, the season that he ended up leaving Wisconsin, he had 23 games played, 11 goals, 24 assists. He had over an assist per game at Wisconsin for uh, 35 points there in 23 games. So it, that kind of built the excitement around uh, Dylan Holloway and really made Oilers fans excited for him. He has kept that momentum going down in the AHL. Let's make sure he's healthy. Let's make sure he is ready for the game uh, with men. And uh, let's make sure that he can step up and be serviceable as soon as he gets in the lineup. The third name to watch out for in Bakersfield that could potentially step into an Oilers uniform next season is Dmitry Samarukov. Yes, the guy has played one game so far for the Oilers this, in uh, his career, but that didn't really go too well. I think most of us kind of remember that game against St. Louis where he gave, it was kind of his fault for the first goal. Another goal was kind of his fault as well, uh, and he only played about two minutes in that game. Dave Tippett really sewered him. And uh, that was a lot of the talk. A lot of the talk was, you know what, Dave? <laughs> you're absolutely giving this rookie no time to develop. You're you're going you're gonna to ruin this kid by absolutely sewering him in front of the media, in front of the fans, and just really putting, almost putting the game against St. Louis that they lost pretty handily already. And they were in that very ugly stretch already. They had some injuries. It wasn't his fault, 
and it definitely made Dave definitely made Dmitry Samarukov feel like it was maybe his fault. Definitely sewered him. Unfortunately, Samarukov is out for the year. He has had some injury problems. So if he can navigate through these injury problems, can navigate through being sewered by Dave Tippett, he will be a heck of a player for the Oilers, truly. In uh, the AHL this season, 51 games, he has three goals, 15 assists, 18 points, and he's plus 22 since January 29th, plus 22. He is producing when he's on the ice. He is stopping the attack from the opposition, and he is really moving that puck well. Dmitry Samarukov is a name to watch if you haven't already heard him. Now, here is the name that most of you probably haven't heard of. This guy came through the American ranks. and I, Personally, I have always liked Philip Kemp. That is who it is. Philip Kemp, who came through recently, he was a seventh round pick, seventh round pick, 208th overall. Normally when you see guys in the seventh round, you're like, ah, okay, he's just filler. This guy's just filler. This guy is far from filler. In fact, he is fuller. He is six foot three, 211 pounds. Uh, elite prospects have him at uh, 203. Once I saw that, I was like, mm. I don't know about that. He is a big boy. And the others have some big defensemen coming up into uh, coming up to the lineup. I mean, you got guys like Philip Kemp. One of the other names that I was going to mention, here's a quick honorable mention. I wasn't going to give it, but an honorable mention to uh, Michael Kesselring, who has had two assists in his most recent games for uh, the Bakersfield Condors. Uh, but Philip Kemp, big guy, can really hit. I've he was in the Oilers lineup during the preseason and he really imposed his body, really imposed his size onto the opposition. I almost thought he had an outside chance of making the team, if I'm going to be honest with you. He looked very good. He looked like he fit in and genuinely looks like he's almost ready for the NHL. Obviously, there's still some marinating there for him to uh, to, to, have, to do, to have, and uh, to finish developing. But as well, the thing about uh, Philip Kemp is that he's really committed to his development, and the Oilers are really committed to his development as well. He did go over to Sweden for Vasby. Excuse me if I'm saying that wrong, Sweden. I understand you uh, kind of manipulate letters. Sorry, I wish I knew Swedish. But he did go over to uh, Sweden, played for Vasby, and actually, shockingly enough, the same team that uh, Raphael Lavoie, uh, fellow Edmonton Oilers prospect, also played for. In Sweden, he had three goals, seven assists, 10 points. And then since Vasby wasn't exactly the best team in Sweden, they had to go into a relegation battle. And in those games for the relegation battles, he did have two assists for Vasby. So he is productive. He can help with the uh, defense. And as Daniel Nugent Bowman put it in his uh, most recent athletic, or not his most recent, but one of his more recent uh, athletic um, articles, he did say that Kemp has been getting a little bit more love for his offensive skill when he's mostly been drafted and been known for suppressing the opposition skill. So we'll see how that turns into and how that develops into the games or into the big game into the NHL for Philip Kemp. We will get more into the Bakersfield Condors because truly the Bakersfield Condors have had a massive week and are in a massive playoff fight uh, for the AHL playoffs. But first, let me tell you about Rock Auto. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning like is your Odyssey an LX or an EX? And wait while the person behind the counter orders your parts on their computer. Choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers and you have a phone in your pocket that you can go and access rockauto.com by yourself. Why choose 30%, 50%, and even 100% more for the same parts that a chain store or a car dealership already has? For example, a Honda Odyssey, the fuel pump for a Honda Odyssey sits at $353. When at rockauto.com, you can get the exact same part for $216. 
That is quite the difference. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. They have everything you could possibly need from brake pads to tail lamps to carpets, anything. Uh, you can explore their very easy to navigate website uh, today to find the solution for your auto parts. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts they have available for your car or truck. Right locked on in there. How do you how did you hear about us line so they know we sent you? Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car could possibly ever need all at rockauto.com yes and let's go now to bakersfield as you couldn't get there from edmonton by car well you could but that is quite the drive if you drive all the way down to bakersfield uh california i i, I don't even want to think about that a lot of a lot of really good tunes though a lot of what are those road trip tunes sing-along tunes yeah Either way, let's go down to Bakersfield for this week's Bakersfield Beat Report as the Bakersfield Condors have had a heck of a week. They went 3-0 and for, and they're in a pretty big playoff race in the Pacific. They currently sit fourth in the Pacific Division. They are only uh, three points behind the uh, Col uh, behind Colorado Eagles for, the four for third in the Pacific and if they do end up getting third in the Pacific, they do end up getting home ice advantage, just like the Oilers must run in the organization. They do get whole, uh, home ice advantage in the playoffs if they do end up passing the Colorado Eagles. The interesting is Colorado does not have any games left in their season. They are done. They're waiting for the playoffs to start. The Bakersfield Condors, however, still have two games left. They only need a couple of points to pass Colorado for that spot. So it is looking pretty. The player of the week for the Bakersfield Condors was, well, as I kind of gave it away, Stuart Skinner, as he had a heck of a week. Great week for Stewie. 3-0 and on the week with a 0 0.67 goals against. 0 0.67 goals against. No, I'm not saying... Uh, shots or save percentage. That's not his save percentage. That's his goals against. He didn't even allow a goal per game. That is incredible. 0.975 save percentage and a shutout for Stewie as we already gleaned over for Stewie. Oh, we need that guy up here. We need that type of goaltending. And especially when we say goaltending in the playoffs is very important. I guess you're not going to bring him up just for playoffs, especially with how Mike Smith and Miko Koskinen are going. But we're not talking about the Oilers. We're talking about the Bakersfield Condors. And we're talking about the thing about Bakersfield is that they have a pretty good defensive set right now. They have a very good defense right now. They have not allowed a goal, an even strength goal, I should say, for the last 10 plus periods. 10 plus periods. They've only allowed one goal or two goals rather over the last three games. And uh, yeah, none of those were at even strength. They didn't allow an even strength goal all week. What? Uh, yeah. Hello, Edmonton. Can we do that? Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. This isn't about Edmonton. This is about Bakersfield. I want to thank Ryan Holt, the Bakersfield Condors uh, beat reporter for that in under Colin Chalk. So obviously when uh, Jay Woodcroft came up to the Edmonton Oilers from Bakersfield, they had to replace the coach down in Bakersfield. And that was Colin Chalk. And under Colin Chalk, 18, 11, and 3 for the Condors. Good enough for a .609 win percentage. That's especially considering they've had a lot of injuries, five goaltenders they've gone through since Chalk has come up. That includes Stuart Skinner, Olivier Rodrigue, uh, Ilya Konovalov, Ryan Fanti just came up as well. All those guys have been playing for uh, the Condors. Plus, like I mentioned, injuries, bunch of call-ups from the Oilers up and down from Bakersfield to Edmonton. The fact that he can keep the ship kind of afloat makes Bakersfield, especially in this position that they are right now with a couple games left, fighting for that playoff spot, it makes it that much easier for them. Over the last week, the results, they started off with uh, San Jose there. A 4-1 win against the San Jose Barracuda on Wednesday. On Friday, they played Tucson, the Roadrunners. If you're old enough to remember, like me, the Edmonton Roadrunners, 
I went, I, I personally had season tickets to the Edmonton Roadrunners. I loved AHL hockey back in the day. They are kind of an offshoot from the, or a continuation of some sort from the Edmonton uh, Roadrunners. So shout out to the Tucson Roadrunners for picking a heck of a name. Uh, yes, they did beat Tucson uh, 4-1. Or excuse me, five one on Friday. And on Saturday was their big game. A goal from Philip Broberg, two assists from uh, Michael Kesselring, as we just mentioned, as well. Tyler Benson getting in on the action, his fourth of the season. He also scored for uh, the Bakersfield Condors, 4-0 for, for the Condors against Stockton on Saturday. And their next game will be Tuesday against the Abbotsford Canucks. Again, we mentioned they only need a couple points to jump over the Colorado Eagles, so that is a very important game to watch. While the Oilers could clinch a home, playoff, a home ice advantage in the playoffs, so could the Bakersfield Condors on the same night. So that will be tonight for the Bakersfield Condors. Make sure you check out that scoreline. A couple other notes I just want to mention. Uh, the points currently for the uh, Bakersfield Condors Sitting first is Seth Griffith, a name that the Oilers were trying to sign uh, once Dave Tippett kind of left. They kind of wanted to bring uh, Seth Griffith up. He had some success with the team, uh, with the organization, obviously, in Bakersfield. And uh, we were looking at potentially seeing him in Edmonton. Unfortunately, a couple of things fell through, so we couldn't see him. 78 points for the guy and 28 goals, 50 assists. That's pretty impressive. 50 assists for the kid. I like that. Um, behind him is a guy that I may trigger a couple people here, but I understand why. Cooper Marodi, second on the team in points, 21 goals, 33 assists, good for 54 points. A guy that a lot of Oilers fans want to see the Oilers give an opportunity to. Uh, uh, completely understandably kind of like Seth Griffith. Uh, Cooper Marodi was, has been in the organization for a while, longer than Seth Griffith, and a lot of Edmonton Oilers fans do want to see him play. Another name I do want to point out to you because Oilers, uh, Oil Country do love their Brandon Perlini. Uh, he has 11 goals, 7 assists, good enough for 18 points and 18 games for Perlini. Maybe a potential call-up candidate in the future, potentially for the playoffs. We shall see once the Bakersfield Condors season continue or uh, ends there in the playoffs. And speaking of ending, that is where we will end today's show. What... I'm telling you guys, I'm feeling positive about the Oilers. I hope you're feeling positive about the Oilers. The Oilers puck drop tonight against the Pittsburgh Penguins. They can clinch a home playoff spot with a W. We shall see you tomorrow, and hopefully it'll be a bright note. We'll see you then. Stay safe.